welcome to my life. Status check, things were perfect. I was officially the coolest guy in school. Hey Lucky, how's it going? Hi, Lucky. People looked up to me as a wicked surfer and president of the board riding association. And my girlfriend, Vicky, saw me as the perfect boyfriend. Yep, I'd become Mr. Popular and I was loving it. The only person that didn't seem to notice the new me was Philip. He was way too busy on a top secret assignment. Project Lisa was in full swing. He was planning to make his move at the Blue Light Disco tomorrow night. Hi, Lisa. Over here. Hey, Philip. You here to play basketball? No, uh... Just supporting the team. All right, girls, come on. Two laps of the oval before we start. Oh, oh. please. But your favourite song just came on. Problem solved. Come on, girls, two laps of the oval. Let's go. Do you want me to watch your stuff while you've gone? It was downright scary the way Philip thought Lisa saw him. <laughs> Told you it was scary. Yeah, that'd be great, Philip. Thanks. Like Sarge says, when opportunity knocks, you answer the door. But while Philip was trying to start a relationship, Mum was waiting for me on the beach. Vicky and me had become the perfect couple. We'd reached a comfortable place together. I could tell her everything. Hey, I've been thinking. How about we go for Chinese before the disco tomorrow night? Dinner, like a real date date. Yeah, it'd be cool. I'd love that. It'd be so romantic. Dinner and dancing. Dancing. Duh, we're going to the disco. Oh yeah, right. Fun. But I can't dance. So maybe I couldn't tell her everything. Because I was Mr. Perfect. And perfect guys can dance at blue light discos. We start with a set of classic songs, then on to modern songs. Then we announce the best dancing couple. And for the finale, we play one slow song. Who chooses the music? Oh. Oh. Yes, Reverend. I'd love to be in charge of the music. I'm very hip to the beat, if I say so myself. You used to be quite the muso. Oh, you might be very busy. Perhaps there's someone else. Mrs S, my dad is pretty rockin' in a musical sense, more than most oldies. Geoffrey, <clears throat> uh, what exactly are you doing here? This is a disco for kids, and I'm giving a kid's opinion, and I think my dad can do it. No worries. Well, it looks like we have our DJ. Yes. So, what do the rest of us get to do? What you do best, patrol. Keep things in order. You are the blue light in the blue light disco, after all. <laughs> Lobby, I'll be head shoe checker. That's a vital job. Oh, you dare wear thongs, young man? Lisa, arrest that boy. <laughs> it was a good thing that Philip wasn't there to see Lisa laughing at Johnny's jokes. But bad for me that he was at home. Philip! I know Lisa's favourite song is here somewhere. I've got the best invention to give her at the disco. You could have asked. You always let me play your CDs. Yes, found it. Things have changed. Talk about Supremo Grumpy. I'm not grumpy, I'm popular. And from now on, you treat my stuff with respect. Is that my basketball? Technically, yes. I'm fixing it to play music so Lisa can think of me when she's training. How am I supposed to play basketball now? But you hate basketball. You don't get it. I've changed. I love basketball now. You have changed. You think you're better than everyone, but you've just got a big head, bigger than your stupid basketball. Philip was right. My head had grown as big as a basketball. I just didn't realise it at the time. Why don't you see what everyone else sees? That Lisa's only nice to you because Sarge is her boss. That's not true. We bonded over mutual interests, science and inventions, and a love of barbecue. Right, I can know anything about girls. Just clean up my stuff. It was our first proper fight. Philip decided it was time he had a bedroom of his own, which was okay by me. You're sure you're okay with this, love? It's a big change. Fine, Mum. Me and Lockie have come to an agreement. I agree that he's an idiot, and he agrees that I'm a moron. As well as upsetting Mum, our fight gave Philip something else to worry about. 
and the only person who could help him out was Lisa. Just testing out my new bike brakes. Thought I'd pop in. I've been trying to remember what your favourite subject was at school. Science. You know that. Oh, that's right. We talked about it ages ago at the barbecue. Found out we had heaps in common, didn't we? Sure did. And almost blew up the shed. That was fun. <laughs> Tops. So, uh, still going to the disco? Yeah, of course I am. You're gonna save me a dance, aren't you, Philip? You can call me Phil, and I'll definitely save you a dance, Lisa. So there I was, a room to myself, and my new goal, to look halfway normal on the dance floor. Or at least a quarter way. What do you call that? Dancing? Maybe you should try a slower song, you know? Crawl before you can walk. What, can you dance? Never really tried. Too afraid you make a fool of yourself? No one's going to be looking at me. I'm practically invisible. They'll all be watching Mr. Popular and checking out your clothes and watching every single move. Still working hard on a new invention, Philip. Yep, it's a winner in progress, Sarge. I can't wait to see it. So how's everybody enjoying the lasagna? Mm. Lasagna? I thought it was spaghetti and meatballs. Follow the recipe exactly. I think what Lockie meant to say was, it's sublime and thank you for preparing it, right? Right. Sorry. I like the lumps, Mum. <laughs> What's wrong, Lockie? Worried well, you might have to dance in public tomorrow? Oh, that's right, you do. Pity you can't dance. Everybody can dance, especially Leonard's. Lockie might be challenged in that area, Sarge. Lockie, have you told Vicky about your little problem yet? I could feel it happening again, the mean streak, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. That's it! You're never touching my stuff again! And stay out of my room! For good! Hey! That's enough! Don't make me repeat the clothesline lesson. When Philip was five, he ate the head off my surfing safari action figure, and we fought for two days until Sarge found a solution. However, if you can prove that you can behave, I might chuck in a rare treat that I've been saving for a special occasion. We'll work on it, Sarge. Won't we, Philip? Sarge, could I have a lock on my door? I thought you'd given up the knitting. Major too tense. What if they go on like this, fighting forever? What if they never get the closeness back? Oh, it's just a phase. Hormones, high school, friends. It's a lot to deal with, remember? The sweetness of change is in the air. What now will come and replace it there? Whether it be soft and hardly to see, or measure it forth by a raging sea. Mm. Let's hope it doesn't bring a raging sea with it. No need to bring out the Dotty PJs just yet. The boys will be fine. No one wanted Mum pulling out her Dotty PJs. That meant a whole day in bed and lots more knitting. So I came up with a plan to make everyone happy. A plan that included a CD and two award-winning performances from Philip and me. Hi, Philip. Gee, that looked interesting. What are you working on? It's a surprise present for someone special. It's a basketball which plays music. Right. Here. I thought you might want to borrow the CD you were looking for yesterday. Thanks, Lockie. You're welcome, Philip. You keep that up, boys. You can look forward to that rare treat later. Yes, we pulled it off, looking like friends again. God wants you to party hardy. Dance. Give pants a couple of ants. Hi, Rip. How's it going? Oh, Philip. 
<laughs> Good to see you there. I need to ask you a really huge favour about the disco. Well, it sounds important. The Sarge told me you're in charge of music, including the special slow song at the end. That's right. Big responsibility. If you play track three for the slow song, you'll make two people really happy. Oh, Lucky and Vicky, is it? I really can't say, Rev. But everybody loves track three. It's a real winner. I'll leave it in God's hands now. Since you two have been behaving yourselves, it's time for that rare treat. You're about to witness a 10-year tradition. My body is the instrument. Music, the ignition. Behold, how to dance. And it's style. Hit it, Joy. This is the rare treat. Turn off every light and hold a private dance. This free love. Come back sometime. This free love. To everyone else, Sarge looked like a praying mantis on hot coals. But to Mum, he was the man. And she was a goner. to dance like that at the disco? Sarge's special treat didn't help at all. I was still stuck. And I only had a few minutes left to practice before my big dinner date with Vicky. So I decided to take advantage. <laughs> Crikey, I've seen three-legged cows with more rhythm than that. Cyril was right. I was doomed. You sure you're okay with the Sichuan chicken? It's pretty spicy. Yeah, I have pepper on my dinner all the time at home. It's great to hide the taste. Yeah, but you know it's chilly, right? I was trying my best to enjoy my dinner with Vicky. After all, it was so different from the last time we were here. Maybe you should get back to me when you've grown up a bit, in about 25 years. Things were different now. She no longer thought I was a kid. She liked me for who I was. I could tell her the truth, that I couldn't dance. Um, Vicky, there's something I sort of have to tell you. I don't want you to get upset. It's about what? You didn't need a whole chili, did you? Water. Just need water. Percy. <clears throat> what did you want to tell me? I can't. I can't. Oh, I know. I can't wait either. Let's go dancing. There's a first time. There's a first time. There's a first time for everything. You don't have to be the old boy to sing. There's a last time for nothing. Until you die, of course, in which case there may be. Great. But I wasn't. The chili chicken had turned into chili frogs practicing karaoke in my tummy. I really needed to go to the toilet. And now, all you crazy cats out there, put your paws together 
for your DJ guest, guest. Right. No one was watching him. And no one cared what he looked like. With one exception. It was my chance to go to the toilet. What do you say? But all the cubicles were full of people, ignoring Egg. Yeah. All I could think of was making best friends with the toilet. But just then. Lachlan, Robert, Louis, Stevenson, Leonard. Will you dance with me? How could I say no? Of course. The moment of truth. Goodbye, Mr. Popular. Goodbye, perfect boyfriend. Hello, sad loser. I knew I was about to become the biggest joke in Angeles. So why postpone the torture? Now I'm not sure of anything. And right on cue, the frogs decided to break dance in my stomach. Remind you of anybody? Skinning image. I didn't know it at the time. I was just trying to hold my stomach together till the last possible second. But I created Angela's history that night, and it became known as the Rumbly Bum Rumba. And suddenly, the chili frogs made room for what felt like a rhinoceros. I'll spare you the rest of the sound effects. And smells. Here, watch this instead. Just wanted to get you absolutely clear on how big a rhinoceros was. Pocky! Not now, Philip. Pocky, I know you don't like me much at the moment, but I really need you to tell me when I should give the ball to Lisa. I'm busy here. Figure it out yourself. The best dancing couple. This is important. <laughs> OK, so I was acting like a lunatic with the head the size of a basketball. But it's not like it was the best timing in the world. Help me, wait, you got something? What? What is it? Um, never mind. At the time, I didn't know why Philip chose not to tell me. But thinking about it later... I would have done the same thing if I was him. Everyone, the best... Dancing couple. I couldn't believe it, but like Vicky said once, life is full of mysteries. And just like that, my tummy finally felt OK. Now find your partners, people, because coming up is the much-anticipated slow song for the evening. Wait here, OK? I'll be right back. And don't forget to head to Street and Motors for your next great deal. dream about being like this. What? In love with a nice guy. Someone who cares about things. Someone bright and gentle. I knew tonight would be perfect. Just like out of a romance novel. It all worked out and Vicky still wanted to be with me.
Philip's heart broke into a million pieces. I realised how much he really meant to me. That's my stuff. Yeah, guilty. It's weird. But I actually missed you gum slurping last night. I thought you might want to move back in. And what if I don't want to? Then I'd have to resort to plan B, which involves begging and groveling, possibly even favours. Hot chocolate. Thanks. Now, where would you like yours? Here is fine for now. Let's talk about these favours. I really wanted to say sorry for the way I acted, for getting a big head, for being selfish, for everything. But all that came out was sorry. As in how many favours and for how long? I could start by unpacking your stuff. Philip had let me off the hook, for the most part. I I so I wasn't perfect. No one was. Maybe all that mattered was that the people you cared about saw the real you and still loved you, even when you acted like an idiot. And right now, I owed it to Philip to act like the biggest idiot I could.